This is New Eden. This is an Eden FM, the radio show, your weekly update on all things with online and with echoes. And here are your hosts, Maestro, Alundria, and Rosalind the Spy. Hello and a warm welcome to all of you. This is New Eden FM, the radio show, your weekly update on all things Eve and your weekly mix of tunes to keep you jolly because everyone needs a little bit of jolly in their lives. Am I right? This is Maestra making my way out to um, Tamaroth where we are hosting this week. So in the studio, we actually have one hell of a roster. Of course, my girl Rose is uh, here with us. What's up, baby girl? Hey, how's it going? Good, I'm good here. Glad to be here like you. Right, right. And of course, Alondria of the Galaxy, the original copy, hey. I think. I, I am the original copy here today. Mm -hmm. And of course, uh, one of my, uh, my favorite uh, lovers, yes, I've got many of them, Latara. <laughs> How are you today, baby? Well, that's news to me. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah, I'm good, I'm good. Yeah, I've got, I, got, I have many <laughs> lovers, like Clansmen, over there got hey. like literally i can almost create my own version of a woman's harem uh from the okay, I'll, I'll make you a channel harem, <laughs> and you can just put people there you just broke my heart mackenzie i thought <laughs> what we had was special <laughs> oh everyone's special i'm sure oh yeah. you it's just ruined of my <laughs> yeah well we never forget our first love isn't that right j factor uh, I, I know he's not going to respond to me as I just said that, but that's that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Man, Jay, it's been so long. How have you been? Oh, good. I've just been, you know, keeping to myself a lot of real life. But, uh, you know, the last few months I've come back to the game, you know, pretty hardcore and, you know, rebuilt the core from the ground up and just trying to have fun again and play the game that I love. I hear you, and I, I've heard that you've you've had some uh, very interesting um, scrimmages, uh, for lack of a better term, uh, with uh, members of the Silent Federation in particular, which is something that we are going to be getting into a little bit more during the State of the War segment. On today's episode, yes, it is going to be massive. I'm not talking about the music. Our number one brings you Eve Talk with representatives from two of the top Merc organizations in New Eden Pocket Edition, State of the War, J Factor representing Legend and formerly Terran Federation, to give us the 411 on the uh, SHHTF shenanigans, if we can, we can call it a war, we can't really call it that, it was over too soon. And in just a few minutes, New Eden News, because we really needed those Exumer drone range blueprints in the mix right now a tune that you guys are probably more acquainted with than I am every time we touch by Cascada. Turn it up, check it out. Eden News, and uh, I mean, what is there to tell? So we got a content update on last week, and apparently this content update included some industrial penetration, which by the way, Last week, my friends just let me walk right off that cliff. I want to point that out before I get into this. Mining drone rigs. Did we really need, um, you know, distance controllers and 
I, I don't understand how this qualifies as new content, but please, someone else chime in with this one. Uh, it, it is apparently new content. And after they launched it, we actually had some technical issues, at least in my corporation. Um, my emulator was running hot, um, much consuming much more CPU than it usually does. And uh, one of my officers could not even log in because, um, because I, I don't know what they did with the code when they were putting in these Exumer and um, uh, mining zone distance controllers. I'm also not completely sure why this couldn't have been included when the patch came out to include the ships. Kind of confused, but it's all right. I think that uh, comes down to them not re not seeing the need for them and people wanting them in there anyway. But Okay, so hold on, hold on. But you're you're, you're going to build a 130 billion is ship just to put mining distance rigs on it. But you know, that actually doesn't sound like such a bad idea considering those things move like turtles. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. I mean, they make good kill mills. They do make good kill mills. Oh, yeah. Uh, we're going to get into that a little bit later on, but I believe that OG lost a, uh, a Roracle to... Uh, <laughs> Uh, ZRQ on last night. 35 billion is almost 36 bill. It was very. 100. Oh, it was 100. 135. Thank you. It was very. It was very glorious to look at. Ow. It, it was yeah 135 yeah. bill. Um, but um, but yeah, yeah. It's um, I don't know. So in addition to that, we got a few optimizations. We got an update on the market transactions and stuff. I mean, we did that every time. Um, mission inheritance option for the Concord Pass. Not sure how many people are um, are using that. One of the Bell members did the, I guess, um, the math on it. And for the one million that it just saves you from having to spend that stuff again, I think you can get like 33 spends anyway. I, I don't know, I, I don't care. It's one million is, who cares, right? It's a fraction of a rat and tick. Yeah. Um, it's one, it's yeah. one million. To save hassle the next week and the next week and the next week, like it's it's glorious. Yeah, I mean, and, I'm, I'm and if you're a multi boxer like me, if it, it I, I I said it before, I would have been willing to pay two, three, or four million. Don't say that too loudly. There are yes, enough sinks right. in this game, and yet there are not enough I, I, sinks in I, this hey, game. I don't. I I know. I know. They they really need to fix. They, we need mineral and uh, we need mineral sinks. We need industry to be fixed. That's what we really need. Absolutely not. Bend over some more industrial penetration. Um, yeah, stop making. Oh no! Industrial yeah. penetration. <laughs> I had forgotten about industrial penetration. I, I, I oh my gosh. Rip. So, uh, you know. I, I know. F. F. F is right. Uh, I think they, okay. So optimize the description of the Intosis link and the drone damage amplifiers. Um, Warp Scramble Shrimp displays the decimals now on the fitting and combat log pages. We have, wait, hold on, we have floating, floating point numbers now? When did this happen? Because last I checked, that's an EO thing. It's, uh, you know, I call the nano cores that upgrade the uh, Warp Scramble Strength on something. It'll now show that number. Oh dear. I guess floating point always was so, a thing, right? I uh, just. Say that again, Luca. Um, okay, so they've updated the, um, they've updated Warp Scramble Shred. It did now displace decimals on the fitting and combat log pages. So apparently those, um, those, those, there are floating point numbers, but we can't see them. It's kind of like in EVE Online, how when you go over to the market, you can actually use decimal values for the is. And so, you know, it's a thing yeah. um, in, in EO. It's never really been a thing in EVE Echoes because we can't see those those numbers in, in terms of tents, which is but they're there. But apparently, no, yeah, they're, now it's they're there. there. They're there. They've yeah. always been there. And it's always, always been there, been yeah. There, but we just always can't see been there. them. They just, they, we just can't see them. And worse, they round sometimes. Uh, and and make us think something is something and it's really not. Yeah, Rob. That's why a lot of people good. when they whenever they got the uh the building to upgrade your, your level, you can upgrade it two points, 
you know, upgrade your <laughs> ratting and whatnot. Right. You, some people expect me to get a 10 and only got a 9 because there was a floating decimal in there and they couldn't see it and the game had rounded up, but it was rounding up. It wasn't actually up. So whenever it thought it should be that, it wasn't. Well, I mean, it, it is basic, um, basic computational uh, math. It, computers typically will always show that round value um, based off of our mental system. So if it's 0.5, it will round it up anyway. Um, at least most code does. It's kind of weird either way. Um, if the numbers are there, please show them. It, it kind of hurts a little bit. Yeah. When people invest a lot of ISK in something and it goes sideways. Um, so optimize the description on the Intosis Link and uh, drone damage amplifiers. The auto description or auto destruction time of the NPC ships in the capital ship port has been extended from 15 minutes to one hour after the enemy is completely defeated. Uh, third tier tabs in the market are now collapsed by default. An item amount uh, and the order location info has been added to the system notification when an order is placed or completed. It's now possible to choose the type of notifications you want to receive in the settings and uh, adjust it. The combat tutorial for first uh, mission training tutorial videos. Now, I'll be honest with you, as someone who actually did create an alt to see how that whole thing would work out and stuff, um, the tutorial does way too much hand holding in my opinion, and it's no wonder that we have so many Care Bears in this game. When I tell you that the Care Bear is bad, I mean they literally will warp you to anomalies. Like, you don't even get to warp yourself. It's, 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 it's terrible, honestly. The, the level of Care Bearism is frightening. I did. Mm -hmm. I'm just letting you know that. Uh -huh. yeah. So, <laughs> it, 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 it's a little painful. Some of these decisions are a little painful, but that's okay. We'll move right along and we will get into this thing that appeared in my inbox a couple days ago. Apparently, they're, you know, cheat cheating notices. Now, people have been cheating and, and getting around the system for a long time. Ever since Inscription of the Galaxy came out for the first time, people have been finding ways to cheat. And uh, now they are in the spirit of fairness and impartiality towards all pilots. They will deal seriously with people that cheat. Now this is uh, including but not limited to the following cheating behaviors. Destroying your own corpse ships, using non-tradable items such as skins to increase the kill mount values, repeatedly destroying the same ship or the same character. Um, and pilots can now submit an in-game ticket on cheating behaviors when they find them. So uh, at the very top of the list, now I don't I don't know if they're cheating or not. Um, in most cases, they're probably not because they are an industrial powerhouse. HTP has been at the top of, of the list as far as Inscription of the Galaxy in most of the indie, the indie things. They've been winning those. Now, given their reputation and what they produce, it's hard to declare whether there is any foul play um, concerning that whole thing. But one way or another, if they are, you know, stop. If they're, if they're not more power to them because they're always uh, number one when it comes to stuff like that. Don't know what else to say about it. So, yeah, there's that whole thing. And of course, the developer weekly Q&A. I hope that there's nothing to do with industrial penetration in this week's. Uh, if there is, oh, no. if there is, and Alondria failed to tell me about it, I am holding her personally accountable for this. <laughs> uh, so, question number one: Will the other trainer ships that aren't in the road set cell for newer pilots ever see some kind of rotation into it? I only ask because this is um, is because access because there are some cool chips that will never be used because honestly no one is going to pay 60 to 80 mil isk for a trainer ship which is why I was wondering if we might ever see them. So we are, might ever see them in the world set cell rotation some other pilot program has before. The answer to this is the training ships for the world set cell are provided to novice players. Their combat capabilities are not as strong as those of ordinary ships. I don't think that the question was translated properly because I think they're talking about trainer ships that are way overpriced in the market but anyway. We're hoping that players could obtain their favorite ship through trade or manufacturing rather than getting them from the world to sell. It's, 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 
So the second question is currently it is difficult to audit corporation hangar lofts because it is all put into a single page. Are there any plans to add filter options for the corporation hangers um, to make it easier for searching, depositing, withdrawals? Uh, the answer to this question, we will consider adding this in our development plan. Thank you for your suggestion. It should have been there all along, really. It is a pain in the ass. I, I once had to go through um, roughly three days worth of bell logs, and it was a pain in the ass to go through all those logs to find one discrepancy, which wasn't a discrepancy at all. It's just that the ship hadn't been built yet. That was the problem. And I went through all those logs to find out that the ship hadn't been built. So, um, yeah, they could do us all a favor and they could get this handled. Could you include the item name and sold amount in the description of the wallet transaction details when an item gets sold on the market? Um, answer, a very good idea. We will add it into the development plan. Thanks for your suggestion. And the final question, can we get uh, to plan our own path instead of choosing the safest route or the shortest path? The answer is there's no plan for this in regard uh, for long for the long time being, but um, the current game allows us to avoid some systems that we don't want to pass through. Um, I'll be honest, the game that does EO even allow us to plot our own paths? Because if it does, I've never actually seen it in the game. Maybe I've never. Well, looked I don't know. It. I, I, I don't think I've ever do looked is put it. in waypoint. Yeah, I mean. Set. Waypoint one, waypoint two, waypoint three, and waypoint four on the map, and plot course and go. It shouldn't be that hard to program. Well, I mean, I'm actually uh, logged into EO at the moment, and we don't even have that feature over there. I mean, it's well, the well, same. maybe we need to get the on them all. Thing. Maybe they all need to put in a, that kind of thing. I, mean, I don't know. I mean, waypointing. It is would be nice. It's kind of it nice. nice. It's something that I'm accustomed to, like seeing in um, World of Warships. You have to like control carriers and stuff like that. You use the um, waypoint system but uh yeah even eve online doesn't have a waypoint system so um it's kind of kind of interesting but the options that they have are the exact same thing in eve echoes for those of you that are wondering with a few extra things that are in there because we don't have like um Tregovian, um victory systems and stuff like that uh in uh in eve which in eve echoes which would be really awesome because that was a really fun oh. event in eo uh, having to avoid Caribbean yeah. systems and getting they've, how much you want to make a bet? Wait, I, I, I don't know. They've taken the anniversary. They've taken the waypoint system out of the autopilot feature in Eve Online. Uh, it used to be there because I mean uh, I know right now it's not there. I, I never used it. Uh, uh, it. It was always a feature. I mean, uh, NFC could go to the star map and uh, oh, select okay. a route by by adding waypoint, adding waypoint, adding waypoint and in final destination and you know that you would have a very nice roaming route that's pre-planned and ready to go actually j factor you are right i had to go and uh, kind of like dig into the options because the ui has seen a lot of improvements over the uh, past few years and uh and i haven't really had to um do this kind of work um at that level yeah the the waypoint or the autopilot route it's still there you um it's it's hidden all the way underneath this other stuff in the routing tab so yeah there is a manage route button you click that and you can set a waypoint so yeah it, it, it is this in eo i'm i am moving around there we go well then the the devs need to get off their butt and get it in eve echo because we really have needed it since like ever it would be nice i mean i i can't complain um i can't complain about it but it's, it's kind of weird. I mean, we also don't have other systems that kind of work. And I think one of my corporation members made a statement in the Capital Channel where if, I think what he said was, if like when, when motherships come out and force auxiliary ships come out, if they require a completely separate scale, he's quitting the game. I'm like, get ready to quit, buddy, because that's probably exactly what they're going to do. <laughs> that's probably exactly what they're going to do. I mean anyone who's anyone who's ever played like EO knows that all those ships are from the exact same you know like general like leveling plan and um in EVE Echoes so are the Porpoise, the Oracle, and the Orca and unfortunately not only did they make the Orca and the Oracle two completely separate 
skill plans, they made them very, very expensive skill plans. So if you skill into orcas and you want to be a Oracle pilot one day, good effing luck. I would imagine that based off of that practice, when we finally get motherships, they are going to be a completely separate uh, skill plan and it's going to be a very expensive skill plan. With Titans, I can understand it, but with, with Super Carriers, I feel that that's going to be a little bit insulting to look at. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Either way, I believe that that in itself concludes New Eden News and uh, I guess, depending on how you look at it, uh, I'm not a Oracle pilot myself. We're building a Oracle for a pilot in my corporation, we can hint. If you want to come and visit us, I mean, we're more than, we're more than willing to, um, <laughs> to entertain you. A uh, boy decided to pop into our space on last night and ask him how they left. <laughs> if you have tacos, if you have a taco bar, I am so busy. Mm, yeah, yeah, go ahead and ask Latara how Voight left us when they decided to TV us a visit last night. It was awesome. There you go. Pizza? Mm, nah. it, was the, uh, it was the most chaotic home defense I've ever been a part of. Well, I mean, <laughs> it was fun. dude, it was hilarious. Bell's just like sitting there screaming at us and cops to call a fleet and stuff like that. And we're like, oh, dude, how are we going to call a fleet when we're the people that are keeping them here in our space? Like, we're going to call a fleet. It's like, call a fleet. Then Latara takes a Megathorn Striker and just sheets it into the fleet. That was, that was freaking priceless. <laughs> and we came out as positive, even though I lost it. We did come out as positive, but that shit was funny. <laughs> just, I don't know what to say. But uh, hey, look, those are, those are the moments that make you like fun. I'm sorry. Just saying, a two shot a cinnable. <laughs> I saw the kill bill, like 1.3 bill. Wow. Uh huh. Yeah. So we, we we did get our is back off of them, but um, but it was it was some fun times. We are going to I'll um, put you guys in the mix of some really awesome tunes, and when we get back, the state of the war right now. This is Voice in My Head by Falling in Reverse. Turn it up. Check it out. And this is the Eve Echo State of the War report. Holy cow. Uh, so, um, war, that's a very interesting word, right? Mm -hmm. I'm just saying. War? Anyone? I mean, we haven't really had a, a real one. Well, correction. I stand corrected. CRQ versus OG and Lord. And of course, as we mentioned earlier, 135 billion ISK worth of Oracle just sunk into the depths on yesterday. Uh, and I understand that Jarhead was not very pleased about this situation. Um, and there were also some OG members that were not very pleased with uh, this situation. Uh, but this is not exactly war, this is just shots fired, right? But... Yeah, I mean, it's looking like uh, a lot of the ZRQ OG pa uh, you know, the pact situation has... Uh down a little bit into skirmishing with a couple of fleet battles here and there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so, <clears throat> with with that whole thing going, it's that's going to be an ongoing process. Um, Jarhead was on the show a couple weeks ago, and he literally said that, well, you know, they want uh, money just to open conversation, and so they're like, I think they're going to just, you know, continue to fight. And uh, I'll be honest, ZRQ is not going to run out of steam anytime soon. So good luck to. OG and Void on that one, but on the other side of the well, galaxy, they're, sorry. they're not going to run out of steam. They're not going to run out of steam because they're getting plenty of content. Pretty much, they're getting plenty. Of, it's the content they, they want. Have, have it's the content. Well, yeah, they there's want. a collage. There's a collage of the, the caps that they have killed. <laughs> they're passing around. So yeah, Z ZRQ definitely like their PVP. They're good. At, they're really good to fight all the time. They always put up a good fight. Uh, other people who, um, who, I gotta say, one of the most impressive groups um, in the game is, in fact, Terran Federation. We had Truth Elliott on the show a couple months ago, and one thing that I was actually really impressed with uh, in terms of how Terran Federation treats uh, stuff is how they treat their members, how important their community is to them. During the war, when Silent wanted to go to war with uh, Genesis Federation and she, they rallied No and they rallied Red Machine and they were just getting all these people together, 
they gave Terran Federation a bunch of preconditions on whether, you know, this is what you need to do in order to join us for this war. And much of it involved them removing core members uh, and founders of their community, and they outwardly refused to do this just to appease what Silent wanted them to do. And I, I always found that this was a fundamental thing. When you can do this for your, uh, for your community, it speaks a lot of volume, and I, I was very pleased to find out that this is how Terran Federation was. Now, a similar situation kind of happened a few weeks ago. They demanded that TF remove Legend for, generally speaking, no, no really good reason. And so, J Factor has come on to uh, to tell us a little bit about how this whole thing went down because we're on the outside looking in. But from what we could tell, it was just a bunch of demands that they made. They were like, either you kick Legend or we're just going to like you know raise TF to the ground. Yes, uh, to that point. Um... I'm glad you made the point about TF because they stood by me through and through. They were willing to burn to the ground with me and my corp. That's how strong of ties they have uh, for their members. And uh, that, that really touched us as legends in general. But uh, yeah, there, there really was no clear reason for it, okay? I mean, there were so many spins and so many reasons that they did this, that, or the other. First, it was that Legend took a fleet and killed a capital in their space. Boom, they treated the pilot very badly after losing that capital to us, after all. In fact, they kicked that pilot for losing a capital to us. And that pilot actually joined Legend. And he's a valued member of our corporation now. Um, but, but, then, but then it became, oh, because of something that, you know, I honestly did a year ago, almost a year ago now. And, I did it in anger, you know, I I said something that I shouldn't have said in my Discord, knowing that somebody was watching, uh, and I owned it as a mistake, you know, I, I wrote an apology for it, and people thought that it wasn't genuine, but in fact it was, it really was genuine, uh, it's hard to convey feeling through text, which is what the uh, apology was on Reddit, yeah. and I, I've, I've mostly been quiet since then, you know, I've just been, kind of been trying to play the game my way, but it seems that everywhere that I go, they, they just want to come and steamroll whatever organization that it is. Uh, yeah. when, when we were in GenFed, um, we saw that the writing was on the wall. Okay, we, I, had to, I had to take care of my pilot, you know, first and foremost. Uh, we got out of GenFed and we were approached by Terran Federation to join them. And, you know, we happily did that. You know, it was a good fresh start for us, a, a very small community. Uh, something we could get some very nice ties to because because legend is a corp in general has very valued members that have been with us since the beginning of the game and very loyal people that have just loved to fly with us and we got the same feel from tf from the beginning it, like these are our kind of people so we were very happy to join them and, and when we joined them uh we, we we immediately started having problems with silent because they were part of the coalition still uh, Silent started blue killing our pilots when they were still blue, so we had a we had a horrible time evacuating assets. Um, but kind of getting back to the point of of the uh, the war, it, it's unclear why they did it, but their main reason was to eliminate me. Um, so as a result, um, I chose to leave Terran Federation. I, I wasn't going to let my the people that I care for, you know, burn to the ground for that reason, even though they were willing to die on that hill. You know, David, the leader of Terran Federation, said, I will die on this hill. Um, but, that but we left. Says a lot. Yes, yes, that yes it does. A lot, Terran Fed, like the fact that they're willing to sit, stand and die for their corporations. And uh, I think that's definitely something to respect for Terran Federation. You know, the, the leaders of Cylon, I mean, they'll, they'll downplay this, but it, it honestly feels like a, a situation of the big guy in the room being a bully and telling everybody how they can play their game. And I, I'm not down for that anymore. I've, I've been trying to move past my mistake. Um, I'm, I'm trying to just play the game my way. And, and I almost quit this last time. I almost just quit because it wasn't worth it. But instead, um, Legend has evacuated from Terran Federation's base. 
We have created a new alliance, mobile infantry, and we're going full guerrilla warfare in the north. We're going to be living out of their NPC stations. And this alliance that I've made, if, if you feel the same way about SHH, if you feel like you've been bullied and pushed around by SHH, I'm looking for you. I'm looking for corporations. I'm looking for pilots. Come join us. I'm offering 10% PPK on kills on Silent Federation. And we have a bucket of this ready to pay pilots that want to kill them. So please, contact me in-game, contact Jaeger in-game, we'd be more than happy to have you. So, uh, if, we, if we go back to the, uh, the initial stages of the war with uh, Silent Federation, or the steamrolling, really, of... Yes, we so. did. I, I mean, in, in fact, we, we, because we didn't want to participate in this war, we were just trying to play the game our way, do some fun roams, we, we don't want to go and, and tear any community down. We don't want to tear any players down Didn't that want to play the game their way. But but they've made it personal now, you know. They, they've continued. What can I do Didn't, at this point? Uh, Everywhere I go to Jeff play. Did you that no term federation structures would be permitted anywhere? I'm sorry, well, I didn't understand. Didn't GenFed at the time announce that they weren't going to allow any Terran Federation structures to be placed anywhere? To be fair, I believe that I'm not sure. uh, stems back. To be fair about that, that stems situation, that, that is not, you know, it's, it's kind of sort of not relevant at this point. If, if, if Honestly, I would like to see the game progress to a point where there are no mega blocks that are telling people how to play the game. Because it's just not right, and it's bad for the health of the overall game. You that know, was a strange viewpoint. Everybody, think, uh, everybody uh, went. There's only one. Left. Don't you don't you think that that is a serious turnaround from the Gen Fed days? Well, to be honest with you, we didn't participate much in anything Gen Genesis Federation. Um, as a corporation, legend in general, uh, we just. Kind of, I kind of put the corp there, and we went on autopilot. Uh, I, I brought, I actually took a, an extended break from the uh, corporate from the game. I, I'm a truck driver. And I brought my family on the truck, and you know, we saw the country for several months. And I, I didn't come back until really the end of it. You know, um, I, I can't think of any offensive ops I ever ran with Genesis Federation ever. Only defense. Yeah, I think it's it's definitely one of those where I think some of the ex Pantheon and ex Genesis pilots have kind of realized how oppressive the large blocks realistically could be, especially now that uh, obviously Pantheon and Genesis have fallen and been split up into these smaller groups. And from what I've uh, gathered from conversations with persons who were ex Pantheon and ex Genesis, that uh, they actually much prefer the uh, small group ga uh, gameplay compared to the massive block uh, gameplay. That is, a, that is a great point. As a matter of fact, when we went to Terror Federation, you know, my, my corporation, were, we, we boomed. You know, members went up again. Um, we, had, we were all very active. We enjoyed the game much more. And uh, that's another reason we're very sad to have to separate from Terran Federation. Yeah, I, d I definitely think uh, the single alliance gameplay, maybe you've got a few friends uh, in your neighboring regions, but uh, like a single alliance sort of gameplay, I think that is much more... Uh, it, it's much more encouraging for content, there's a lot less internal stress, and it just, it just allows for a better gameplay experience. And uh, like I say, I think a lot of people are realizing that now that their big entities have uh, have been shattered. But you also have the fact that uh, Pantheon and Genesis were kind of the check and balance to Silent Federation and vice versa. So there is no check or balance on Silent Fed anymore. They are the hey, biggest enemy. Quite frankly, if I had to do it all over again... I would have found a small alliance like Terran Federation, and I probably would have played the whole game there. 
Because let me tell you, I mean, back in the pantheon days. Did you not days, hear that really Iowa, when you were in PFC? Well, well, back in the pantheon days, you know, in general, and and I would consider TSC well, part TSC of that. Post, you know. TSC is post pantheon. Like we were not pantheon. Anyway, uh, back in the Pantheon days, like I, I was running fleets like around the clock. You know, uh, my PMs were full every day. I, I played more Discord than I did game time in any of my off time. I, it was, it was a pain. You know, and uh, I wouldn't want to do that again. Okay. Uh, TSC, uh, TSC, I, I did have a uh, have a good feel, you know, with TSC, but. There was also pressure from SHH there, you know, and... Oh, yeah, most definitely. TSC, I did have a... I, I just feel like I had to go to GenFed, you know, so to speak, so that my corporation had a chance to survive. Yeah. That's fair. And I love the TSC guys. I, I love Stoney, you know. I, I love a lot of those guys. I, I, I still talk to a lot of those guys, you know, um... A lot of respect there. I can definitely vote for the uh, smaller entity sort of play because uh, no, we are just no and yet. We're just two alliances, and uh, it's definitely cuts down on diplo work. And we were talking earlier about how bots aren't always in line with uh, what silence marks are, and uh, yeah, we avoid that completely because we just have to adjust two different alliances standings and everything's blue or red or neutral in just a couple of clicks because of course we'll have alts and yet unknown so yeah i can definitely see the advantages of smaller entities being far better for the game yeah, it's uh, and then the smaller content, entities like, too you have more people to go find more people to go roam especially when you're smaller size because then the map opens up to you yeah, yeah, yeah. and smaller communities too think of it this way you can develop more of a camaraderie between you and your alliance mates because when you're several thousand people, you, you don't know Dick from Harry. You know, uh, it's it, it, if you understand my meaning there. Yeah, you really get to know your pilots, and that is yeah, something I love about yeah. them. Since we've been so small and been doing this for so long, is everybody knows everybody. We all know each other's strengths and weaknesses. We all know when each other's online and stuff like that. Yeah. It's real friendships kind of bloom there. And you really see yeah. the real camaraderie between everybody. Yeah. Yeah. When you see a Great. certain person come online, you know exactly what you can ask them to do. Specific people will find niches for themselves. And, you know, there'll be scouts or there'll be tackle or anything. When, when you see that name come in, if you're in a coalition of a thousand people, you don't know him. But when you see one of your people jump on comms and you know that they're a logie or you know that they're a good tackle, that's uh, that's hugely beneficial. You uh, what was going on was it didn't exceed the, the FC room. And there were certain people we knew were really good for jobs. And that was pretty much it. I I can't say that I knew everyone. I, I just I just can't say I knew everyone. It was Oh yeah, it wasn't and, uh, we were right there together. I mean, yeah. was the Pantheon days. Yeah, it was just nothing but constant delegation. Like, okay, I need you to take care yeah. of this, and I need you to take care of this, <laughs> I need you to take care of this. It was just it, it was monotony. It wasn't fun. The stress, the stress in the, ends up just turning people against each other, and that's not good. No, no, and that that really frustrated me. But I mean, when it comes down to it. It, it's it it was kind of different. Pan, what Pantheon wanted to do, what, what Banana wanted to do, he wanted to create a community that was quote unquote for everyone, and that kind of worked to an extent until the PvP pilots kind of sort of forgive the term for those of you that prefer to Care Bear got tired of babysitting, and and we lost so many PvP pilots because of that. So um, I think that that it, when you have an organization that big. You have this massive empire. I mean, what are you gonna do if if you have like out of out of thousands of people, only like four hundred of them are willing to stand up and, and fight? And that was the problem we had. 
that was the biggest problem that yep. we had. Hey, look, Stoney is asking for um, is asking for entry into the studio. By all means, please uh, give uh, give them studio access so they can come all in right. here. But uh, I swear, it's like we're this. We are really just like we're getting a lot of FCs, dude. We're getting a lot of FCs in here at this point. All I'm saying is that in these smaller groups, it's very nice. It is very nice. We went over to Burr. It, it was it was just nice. Like one group of people, one Discord. You know, almost everybody in your Discord. Like everyone, even the Chinese people. You even know the Chinese people. It's amazing. But you don't get that in like massive coalitions. I feel like with coalitions, we could team up with like a group. But then after that, can we just like set each other gray and go back to you know shooting each other and stuff? Cause for real? Yeah, friendly uh, just, just, uh, just uh, Yes, yes. Just, just imagine a, a, a game full of smaller entities. If one has a dispute with another, they, they wore it out, you know, and they don't have to worry about five alliances banding together to come kill you. It, it's, it's just, it's detrimental to the game. It leads to these huge server battles that is unplayable to a lot of people. You know, uh, if, unless you have top tier devices, and it's just not as fun. Yeah, I, I pretty much just play the game in my John. community. I, I just there it is. You do see the uh, you do see the irony of what you guys are saying just now, though, right? Yeah, I think uh, Clansman. The the irony comes from the fact is they groups like Pantheon and Genesis sort of grew and grew and grew, and I don't I don't don't think everyone realized how bad it was or how stressed it was making them until they that weight gets lifted and they're now in a smaller group again and they go oh why did i deal with all that crap before yeah, absolutely I mean, like my uh, style well, it's, when it's, when tsc left <laughs> when tsc left pantheon we were very adamant about not having a coalition again like i think anyone in the south can attest to that if they spoke to us at any point in time i was very anti like pantheon 2.0 or anything else like that because it's just way too much fun the other way like our relationship with boop is a perfect example like we will turn them blue if we need to hang out and shoot the shit and have content and literally within minutes of the fleet being over we're like back to gray and can go roam each other and have fun yeah, yeah. i think Land uh, was actually for that. Yeah. trying to make a point uh there uh no we we understand the irony of what you're saying um Yes, it was known and silent that destroy those organizations, but at this point, there's a really bad balance of power. And um, I mean, you know, when one organization can basically tell another organization how to play the game, this is the danger. And so Genesis died because in many ways, Genesis did that. Pantheon in many ways did that, but both of those organizations are dead. But there's one left. And yeah, well, literally yeah. did that. It was the reason why we started it. They told us we couldn't Bingo. take some. So yeah. now it's like, oh, yeah. 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 Right. So, I, I, mean, I, I, I think the point, I think the point of, the, of all this should be like, what's good for the goose is good for the gander. If, if people are willing to band up to destroy Pantheon, willing to band up to destroy Genesis for these very same reasons, I, I, I think the same should apply to everybody. And was always looking for contracts, did? Oh yeah. We are always looking for contracts. Yeah. Well, Especially any war that were to, were to start <laughs> now, you'd see. It would be very interesting nowadays if we started up a server war because oh, this would be no. the first server war where we truly have capitals out already. Oh no! Yeah, I think everyone is just waiting for the capital war. I think now. everyone, yeah, everyone's the, just the, sitting back going, "When is this going to start?" Because it's going to be. You oh, well, it's we, we were, were hoping that it was going to be the Gen War. We uh, we we brought uh, we brought most of our caps down from for the Gen War. I mean, we still have unspent war chest that uh, we had allocated for the Gen War, which was never really touched. I still don't really understand the fall of Genesis. Can you put in a bit more light of what actually happened? I mean, I was we were on grid and. There was just no real fights to be had. Could you? Well, well frankly, it came to it came to people not fleeting up for defense. It came to people turtling up, you know. And uh, 
and then uh, and they were just the, too large. Uh, they were too large. There was a lot of traveling Empire. for anyone. And Empire. Nobody wrong. wanted to do it. Yeah, there were yeah, a lot but, of. Um, uh, yeah, but Pantheon, lot of the Pantheon battles. War was epic. There was so many good fights in the in the Pantheon War, and even Gen came at least for the K4 battle. But there wasn't really the, those epic fights that we saw from the likes of Pantheon or anyone else. Really. What happened? I mean, why, why, why was there no real defense made? From my perspective, I, I feel it's less about on-grid things. And this is, I swear on my life, no slight to Mama. It's, I actually feel bad for both her and someone like Banana. I think Jen was in a state of war much longer than Pantheon ever was. And as someone who runs an alliance, I couldn't imagine what it's like to running a coalition. And that shit is just hard on you. And I think when you start seeing that fatigue on your leader, that fatigue trickles all the way down to the line pilots. And it's no fault of the leader, in my opinion. Like, this shit is stressful. And let's be real, we are very hard on each other on Reddit and everything else like that, that it's not just about winning on a grid. And when your leader gets fatigued, I think everyone does. And that just everything falls after that. Yeah, it was a, it was That's a, a good perspective. It, it was a mess, too. Like, by yeah. the time we got to the end, um, Topsy and Banana were not running Happy Bees. Like, the, the section of the Discord and Pantheon that belonged to Happy Bees, they weren't running it, I was. By the time, like, we got to the end. Um, because Topsy was planning on doing this flying circus thing uh, with STJ, and um, Banana was ill. So, I was basically taking care of stuff in Happy Bees section of Discord, that particular alliance. Um, Aran kind of stepped up a little bit like later on, but at that point it was pretty much, I mean, Pantheon was pretty much dead. Like TSC had already made uh, their choice. I mean, Stoney, you remember when I first got into the, um, got into the, uh, the actual uh, high command room with you guys. I mean, you guys have pretty much already made your decision. They brought me in there, and I'm like, well, what did you bring? You brought me and Kales in here to to do what? <laughs> it's it's this is not good. Like you should have let us come in here and helped you, like three weeks ago, when when this was salvageable. But at the same time, I agree. Massive massive coalitions. It seems like it's fun, and you're running rough house, and you're winning battles, and you're having fun when you're winning. But at the same time, in retrospect. There is always going to be someone who's looking at you with shifty eyes, and they want to kill you, you know. And uh, and in this case, yeah, No had an excuse for wanting to kill Pantheon. You know what I mean? Uh, they had a very good excuse. Uh, to an extent, Silent had an excuse for wanting to kill Genesis Federation. And uh, the biggest problem with being the person with the biggest balls in the room is that eventually everyone else is going to start looking at you as a menace, and it becomes a problem. And I think that that's. That's kind of the sentiment. It happened to Pantheon, they, they became seen as a menace, and they got taken out. It happened to Genesis Federation, became seen as a menace, got taken out. And, um, yeah, we're, we're at a point Now we're in the same position with Silent. We're unfortunately in the same position with Silent. I don't even want to talk about that. Well, the, the same will happen with No as well. If everything, every legacy dies at some point, every civilization will eventually die, and We'll be defeated as well. Silent will be defeated. Kind of. Yep, everything will. Everyone will be defeated at some point. Well, I mean, with, wouldn't you say that No is a little bit different in a way of like, I've at least witnessed through Intel channels. Like at a certain point, you guys like stopped recruitment. You guys like limited your recruitment. So I mean, yes, you guys will fall at some point, like any other legacy, but not because maybe because you became too large for yourself. But well, that's just my opinion. Well, we tried to exactly keep it. We what we did is we, we know we've seen like another alliance. Put it that way. We won't ever take what we are two alliances already, and to be fair, that's probably too big. <laughs> yeah, Tahiti just one day wakes up in the morning in a bad mood and just hits the the spanned alliance buttons and all anarchy breaks loose. Yeah, could it absolutely could. That's that's not far fetched at all. But yeah, we won't ever take on a. A third alliance, put it that way. We're, the two alliances already is too big. Yeah, I mean, too. too so, yeah, big. definitely. You no, know, we used to be a part of Silent uh, back when Black Legion was, you know, first starting out in the beginnings of the game. We've seen the effects of the coalition. And we were one of the first cores to really get irritated by it. 
Um, and that's why we made our move to NC and then figured out politically what all that landscape was. And then just decided we wanted to do better. And it's kind of been our thing to stay small. They already, so people have to take up the slack and other people then have to take it up. And we're really good at that, to be honest. But, uh, Runs just uh, giving over CEO to Kenopa, so a big congratulations, man. So he'll be taking over, and uh, just uh, but it's still a team. But even just with the two alliances, even that's already a pain in the ass. I don't know how you guys can do it with different entities with your with your own uh, with your with your own personalities and you know your own names like bots, of course. It's hard not to keep our small little group all. <laughs> one group, yeah. Ex- exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cats. Exactly. I, I have no idea how you could arrange. I mean, if you were wanting someone set blue to your organization, my God, how much of a pain in the ass is that going to be? Well, to, it depends on who you are. To get your multiple alliances. Back at, at the Genesis moment, I'm thinking like silent side yeah. on that one is like, I remember asking once if they could set somebody blue during a coalition. They're like, Dude, it's going to take an hour for us to do. I'm like, yeah. I can yeah. do it with one but, tune in two minutes. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> we Pantheon, just log into hard. different tunes and set it. You know, with Pantheon, it was more hard. difficult, but with Genesis Federation, Mama Saris basically ran the entire organization, so she just had to log on to each one of those accounts and change the status. I, so. <laughs> no wonder she got burned out then. I mean, we, we have to do that on with two tunes. She got just that As long as out. there's one of us on with an all in yet, yeah, then we can do it for the whole alliance in a second. Yeah. I've so, got to ask and you even a then question. it still takes us for <laughs> make sure we're blah blah. Oh geez. Can I ask a yeah. question, uh, Clansman? Does this now mean that no is the only alliance in this game where there is a standing bounty on its leader? Oh shit. Uh, but yeah, uh, that was I think that, was that Canopus? I thought it was yeah. Cult. Is it not no, Cult? No, it's Canopus. Is it, it Canopus? Oh, oh, oh there you go, yeah. Oh, so my gosh. uh he has an open ticket for anyone to kill him, and uh, there's PPK on that. Do you remember what it was? I don't remember what it was. Um, I can't remember yeah, how much it that... was, but I do know the only condition to it was not during CTAs. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But, uh, Any other time, it was the... open game. If anyone <laughs> in No has the balls to do it, I mean, uh, you could be bringing a lot of weight down on yourself after it, but if you want yes, to clean that out, you could out to a lot of people. No does not yeah, actually yeah. have rules against uh, blue on blue. No, technically no. No. You know, technically no. I swear, like in, in, you know, this is this is treading dangerously into the waters of Coop Mel over there, saying that he's gonna pay no to hunt on <laughs> <laughs> BRRR care bears. <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying, say you made the offer to Vetamune yesterday to come down and Mel will pay PPK to void. Uh, when they come down and kill his care bears. I know, right? <laughs> hey, if, you, if, if, if you guys don't have blue on blue rules, uh, J Factor, you should join No. Hmm. <laughs> damn. All right. You know, <laughs> we have don't be a dick rules, but oh, in fairness. yeah, yeah, that's our that's our one rule. Don't be a dick. That means so many things. That's the golden rule situations. everywhere. You can't go anywhere in yeah. New Eden, and and well, there's one place you can go in New Eden, and it's okay to be a dick, but. Uh, we're not going to get into that. What we will, however, do is get into Eve talk in just a moment because, I mean, as you can see, we have all these really awesome people in the studio at the moment ready to talk about their organizations. And I think that today is Merc Talk. So we have on the uh, side of Burr, you have uh, both Latara and um, M. Eliotis. And on the side of No, we have Dragon Viper and, um, and one of my favorite peoples. Definitely my favorite Scotsman and Klansman. So, uh, yeah, uh, without further ado, I'm gonna put you back into some really awesome tunes and um, back. So, you talk. You tuned into New Eden FM, your music, your voice, and your weekly update on all things Eve. Didn't know I was a Christina Novelli fan. Um, high five there, my good friend. Neither did I. Yeah, yeah, she has an extraordinary voice. She's one of my favorite um, 
uh, female artist in Trance. In fact, she won the Female Artist of the Year Award, I believe in 2020 and 2021. She's one of the most prolific voices of that genre, right up there with Haleen and, um, and Susanna. So, um, you know, uh, there there you go but this is Eve talk this is not music uh, talk I have a show for that on Thursdays and today we welcome in um, leaders in the two biggest Merc, Merc organizations in New Eden now would be no and BRRR <laughs> what new leader do you have what do you what new no uh, leader do you have uh, that, that's your, your representation, no uh, oh. clansman. Oh shit! Yeah, <laughs> and dragon viper. Ah, yeah. yeah, dragon. Dragon is the leader that you brought. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah, totally. Dragon is the leader, of course. Uh, we have our uh, our pirate king and uh, Meliodas. Who oh, interest? No, no, don't use that title. It's just I don't know why. Why? <laughs> but. <laughs> Uh, I mean, how is it my fault? That, I mean, it's I didn't. Okay, fine. It says uh, it says it even in Discord. I mean, what are you gonna call yourself, uh, the Rag King uh, no. instead? I don't. Kenzie, okay. Kenzie, he he's the Rat King for another week. We're on our enforced rat ratting. <laughs> we are being enforced rat ratting king. apparently, unless yeah, someone comes into our system, and then we just like eat <laughs> chips. It like literally Mel said there are comms and just like listen to us eat chips. It was like, oh yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm in care bear mode right now. I can't help you. <laughs> but um, I really hope that goes over better than uh, Klansman trying to rap. Yeah, it doesn't get that. Lost his Mac to a uh, to an anon. <laughs> oh no, I, ne I never lost it. I never lost it, and that was because Tahini was there with his logi who had reset all of his logi skills. <laughs> Dude, I um I lost the I lost the Balgorn to um to rats was um trying to see if I could face tank a tier turn story mission. And I got to that last wave and um the small mobs got under my guns and uh ripped. So Ratin's no joke when you're uh, when you're a pure PvP pilot. It it was it really hilarious is. to hear the uh, Ratin the guys is stressful, no. man. We always lose ships when we try rat. Yeah, uh, someone yeah. says, come on, we'll go, we'll go level this base while we're at it. That's when the real stress comes I found ratting very simple, actually. Like, I read it like, three, four months ago once. And uh, <laughs> no joke, I earned a billion esque in like three hours. That was like great. And I didn't even do it myself because uh, I just. Uh, got my carrier undocked and everyone's like hey Mel is gonna rat and everyone's like hey there's a special uh, rally point here just come over I was like okay great so I just sign away in and do what they tell me to do and then I started getting invites because in the last chat everyone's like oh Mel's ratting uh, and invites like oh there's another special and then so I think I did like three special fleet rally and two regular rallies and got like a billion in ticks and just went home and then people talk about, I don't have ASK, I don't understand. In three, four hours, you can earn a billion, so... <laughs> yeah, okay. but, uh, that's really interesting. And, and where is it that you normally rat with that carrier? Well, yeah, you can come over. I mean, you know, if, if you if you want to blab my caps, <laughs> just let me know, you know any time, man. <laughs> the problem is, when coming to Burst Space to try to... You play, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll drop... We'll, we'll, I'll hot drop, like, on your separate fleet, I, I don't mind. Yeah. <laughs> I did it on mm -hmm. recently. <laughs> I mean, one of my... Well, friends, but I'll give you the info later on. Sweet. Yeah, yeah she's the worst spy ever. Worst spy ever. Seriously, though, I mean, yesterday, <laughs> it, it, it was, it really was, it really wasn't, um, like, done on purpose, but we had this Scepter pilot that was just jumping between, I think, OO and, um, and R97. And I was trying to get some numbers on my dreadnought, like to find out like where my DPS is, what I need to work on. So I had to go outside and activate showdown mode. And it just so happens that the scepter pilot comes in the system. And uh, I believe it was Cyber James that was like, oh my God, McKenzie, did you really undock that for the scepter? I didn't even realize the guy was there. <laughs> he was like, that dude is gonna think that we dropped the fucking dreadnought on him. <laughs> you got trigger happy. I don't know, man. 
Right. There, there are always those cat pilots everywhere who are just like, ooh, neutral in system, undox carrier, undox dread. <laughs> yeah, thank God for those guys. Thank God for those guys. I mean, they, they do make I mean, things interesting, but yeah. They make Alliance chat so, interesting, so maybe when everyone goes crazy about it. Well, it's like, um, got a couple of pilots who it's like, Oh, there's a small uh, neutral roam coming through our pipe, and they're like, "Okay, already on it." Masino is on the way, and then like five minutes later, it's either, "Okay, I'm tackled and I can't get out," or it's, "Ah, Rome's dead." Yeah. One or the People other. People also underestimate, like, overestimate their carrier so much that they underestimate like how much subcaps can do. Like, I, I think even today, in in Thomas' drone, based on what I heard, is like, uh, like you don't drop. Fuck ton of carriers on a on a like full cinnable fleet with like thirty cinnables, you know, like, not really ideal thing. And they drop, I think, they drop like five caps in, a, in the screenshot that I saw uh, against like thirty cinnables. I was like, you know, you know, good luck. And then what I saw, I think they killed the carrier and then got the fuck out because warp steps and everything. <laughs> you just the, like... <laughs> the nerf to the batteries is a big blow to capital pilots. They went from being super tanky to being from cat stable to, uh, to to just being pretty soft, a lot softer with those yeah. cat batteries there. Even dreads are still pretty bricked, but uh, I wouldn't say they're terrible now. Yeah, it's just a matter of time. I mean, even, even even very low DPS over time, because you're, you're going to kill it as it's cycling that battery. So yeah, over time you're going to kill it. Oh, definitely. Yeah, so, so maybe I, it's not I, so much a DPS race, more just a time race. If you can buy enough time before the response fleet gets there, you'll probably kill it eventually. Yeah, oh, definitely. So, I mean, the reason we got uh, representation from uh, No and Brethren Court was uh, we, we wanted to sort of, sort of see what, what does it take to be in a Merc Alliance these days. I mean, things have changed, metas have shifted... And uh, I know business is good, so, uh, I mean, how are things going for No right now? I know you're busy in Omist. Yeah, we're on contract uh, down Omist, like you say, that general area. It's not a full deployment, it's just kind of a casual sort of thing, So, but we're just kind of grinding away at that. We're not deployed into their space, but we're thinking about it. And, uh, yeah, it's just kind of casual just now. It's not... Uh, not too much stress, and uh, guys are having some fun. Like I said, uh, said to you earlier off air, where uh, most of our Russian contingency is back, so uh, they've put a lot of fire under people's asses just now. So a lot of fleets going out. Yeah, it's just good. It's uh, it's just kind of chilled out just now. You know, there's no there's no real push to complete contracts yet. There's contracts everywhere. Yeah, there's you can't complete a contract fast enough. Really, since since Pantheon days, it's uh, there's always somebody looking for you to come and help them with something. So yeah, yeah, business is good, and it's just kind of chill just now. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's it's one of those. I think uh, Brethren Court came onto the scene at just the right sort of time, where obviously Pantheon had fallen and Jen had fallen. So like, there's a lot more small groups, and I know uh, so Mel like. We've had a lot of contracts come to us as well. I mean, it was to the point, I think, where we were turning them away because we couldn't take them on. Yep. Well, it's it's surprising how much, because initially, uh, before starting Burr, uh, my thought was whenever No is doing something and they just claim it contract, and it's like bullshit, you know? Like, I don't believe it. it. Can't all be contracts. And then you start your own thing, and then you figure out it's just fucking insane how much people want to kill each other for money. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> I mean, sometimes we do stuff that's not contract, but right. um, oh, no. yeah, I mean, now, now you understand that there, there's definitely a demand for it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, if yeah. you're good at, uh, you need so to be we, good at. We have to like. I mean, so far, I think since we started. Um, I think most of our contracts get rejected because we just don't have time. Um, and after the void contract, I think we had to like uh, 
reject other contracts uh, because I, I want the Alliance to have some care bear time, to be honest, um, for two weeks. I, I know Lotar has been complaining a lot about it. Uh, <laughs> but but it's just two weeks. To, uh, you know, we want we want a break. You know, people want to go on vacations and stuff and come back from vacation and caught COVID like me. Uh, and you know, there's uh, uh, and and some care bear times are needed for some of the goals that we have. So I think it's it's better to like put people back in the home and be like stay for now. You know, like for a couple of weeks and then we'll go. We'll get back on business right after. Um, some break time is needed, I think. Yeah, then yeah, every now and again, you need to let, yeah. Every now and again, you sort of need to let the pirate pilots uh, relax, do their own thing, not be forced to do what they need to do. Um, yeah, I mean, even then, it's not like they listen. Like, I basically said, oh, don't do fleets and stuff, but apparently they're killing capitals every day. It's <laughs> kind of frustrating, but. Hey, I don't know what to say. that had nothing to do with me. <laughs> You're killing too many cats. Stop well, it. I mean, nothing's too many, bro. I, I think it's been like two and a half months. Uh, I think in total, I didn't get a complete count, but uh, based on the frequency and last count, I think we killed about close to 40, 50 now. Uh, We've had some uh, unfortunate Citadel contracts where we killed Citadels or defended them without any real fight. I don't know. No one showed up. Kind of yeah. boring. Uh, yeah. Blame Stony. Uh, I also blame No. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, No was was out there 24/7. I think camping in real or something on the same day that we that they should have been on grid fighting I know. us. Uh, it's, 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 it's a bit frustrating because like. Um, uh, so it wasn't it on down, purpose, I promise. I know. Uh, so it went down to a point where even when we took like the cheapest contracts possible to just get into a fight, uh, like our contracts are pretty expensive if we exclusively contract us. But then if it gets to like, oh, we'll fight, will you come join? You know, for funsies, then we'll just say, oh, cover SRP and we will. Uh, and it's not like a regular thing. It will probably happen like once or twice uh, sometimes. Uh, it happened when No uh, reached out, like, hey, we'll have a fun fight. And we're like, yeah, we'll send a Naga fleet because, you know, we're missing fights because people don't fight. Uh, so, <laughs> so we sent a fleet for that one. Uh, we also did, did some NPSI on, like, stupid structures that, like, uh, the game is going to a point where it feels like without structures, people don't really have anything to, to form up for. And it's kind of getting boring. Um, uh, it's getting to a point I feel like we should start considering that, you know, just because an alliance is small or just because they're too big, structures are off limit kind of thing is kind of kind of shitty. Uh, game isn't fun anymore. Uh, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not like, you know, if it's not like, um, I think I spoke to Ron a few days ago too, is like, and, and we're like, yeah, you know what, like at least let structure poking be open. Like, you know, like not to make timers and stuff, like, you know, shoot a little bit to see if they form up. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> uh, but but that's also probably not enough. Um, it gets to a point where you, you go, to, go to a situation where, like, if you want to make a timer to, to get a fight out of it, not necessarily you have to blow it up, you know, but, but you know, some form of, uh, structure engagement seems like necessary because Netties isn't really giving us any other option to have like proper fights. Uh, it's uh, like you don't have to yeah. call CTAs or something. Regular fleets doing regular stuff without calling CTAs, you know, 30, 40 people. That's uh, pretty decent. Uh, <laughs> I, I think. Yeah, I think, uh, I think that's where Echoes falls down from EVE Online. And I don't have any EVE Online experience. I'd never even heard of EVE Online before I started playing EVE Echoes. But it's my understanding that in EVE Online, different regions have different resources, and that in itself is something to protect. And that's something that's right. kind of missing from the game, because every resource is available in every system, or depending on your yeah, your security yeah. level, of course, but every region, you know, so, I mean, yeah, so absolutely, if there was no structure bashing, there really isn't much of a point for someone to come and fight your fleet that's rolling through, yeah. And that's, and when, you, that's when you start looking at bases base anomalies and stuff like that and base anomalies is even more annoying than structural warfare 
yeah. bases now you can re reset a base every 48 hours with your citadel so yeah yeah they awesome. ruined it too yeah. so i mean like i remember back in the days when you were attacking void and and they were defending the intermescent belts like with everything they got you know <laughs> That was fucking fun, you know, you don't really put like real, you know, threat towards their alliance, but you still get good fights out of like those stupid intermescent belts, whatever they meant, you know, but it was fun content, you know, <laughs> like why not? Uh, yeah. And, and there's, there's these things missing. So now everyone is ca coming to like some sort of stupid stalemate where it's like, oh, but we, we will allow everything but structures, guys. Um, then you, you shoot a small alliance, then people go like, oh, you're bullying. You shoot a big alliance, you get into a war. You shoot something, you you know, uh, and then it becomes like a whole server-wide coalition because people call people's friends and they call their friends and it's uh, all over again. You know, uh, that's kind of bullshit. Uh, it's, uh, I think that needs to stop. It needs to get to a point where you're allowed to shoot things, you know, you're allowed to have some fun. Not necessarily you have to blow it up and stuff, but, you know, people need to form up. And if they don't, then it will get to a point where, it, you know, if you call me a bully, I don't really give a fuck anymore. <laughs> or, you know, you can also pay us. We'll come out without complaint, you know. Yeah, uh, yeah that's what it is. You know, it speaks volumes. Ah, uh, yeah, but you can pay us as well. It's definitely pay us as well. Pay us as well. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I mean, the, it, it has become kind of like a mess. Null was never meant to be safe space. And the only reason why Null exists in the way that it does in EVE Online is because the organizations that live in those places have the strength to actually hold their space. Diplomacy has a place to an extent, but it's like if you don't have the guns to back up you living in this location, the pilots willing to fight and defend it, you know you're gonna get you're gonna get run out. You're gonna get you're gonna get kicked out of your space. It's just the way that it works. And all of these don't shoot structure type things, it really is more of a safe a safety net for the Care Bears, if I'm being completely honest with you. Because to be honest, I mean there's nothing really that stops, you know, pandemic horde from going back and shooting Goonswarm again in EO. Except for the fact that they just haven't felt like it yet. <laughs> no, it should be more like if you shoot us, and, and again, it, it should be like the fear of getting shot back. You know, it's not, it shouldn't be like, oh, on principle, we don't shoot anything. That's kind of, I don't know, I, I feel stupid about it. And I know it, it hampers the growth of very small alliances, and, you know, people should be considerate. I like all of these things are like understandable. But it also has to be normalized in some form that, you know, it's not like it does, I'm shooting the structure doesn't mean I, mean I like, want to like delete you from this game or something. <laughs> yeah, when you, uh, when you hit someone's structure, it's a, it's a slight to the very man who, you know, that must be defended at all costs. Yeah. And they're not even that expensive. I mean, they're, they're no more than a capital set. I mean, when you've got the whole court putting in on that, it's, they're not even very expensive, but it's right. a matter of and principle, I think, for most things, most people. It, it, exactly, and it also creates this affinity towards structures, which, I, you know, I don't understand where people are like, oh, my structures are gone, my, you know, my corporation is heartbroken and shit, you know, fuck you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's, uh, it's 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 attachment to that space as well, you start calling it home, and you're you're offended if any neutral even passes through the system, and yeah, it's it's right. not the right way to be about it. Yeah. You also got to remember, though, guys. Yeah, that to be... yeah go on, sir. You got to remember, guys, that in this studio we have uh, five very bloodthirsty and aggressive uh, pilots <laughs> and FCs. So... Yeah. yeah. So I mean, so so what? You know. You... So, I told this to even Mama once, you know, like all the Diplo stuff and all the Care Bear stuff, like Diplo is done with guns, to be honest, like in, in this game. And it's not about, like, oh, yeah. you know, talk nice and all these things, because Mama would go, go give, like, loot to everyone because they wanted to and all this, you know, they're like, oh, we'll be friends, can we be loot? Sure. You know, and, 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 and this situation where it's like, 
they can't do anything. And, and even at the current state where there's like, you know, market organizations and there's a lot of contracts going on and fun stuff going on, it still feels boring. Because most of the contracts end up being PPK, which is again, boring. You know, the PPK is a fucking grind. It's, it's good money, but you, know, you don't really enjoy it. <laughs> so, so yeah, yeah, overall. Like, our PPK doesn't go to our pilots. We don't pay our pilots. Do you guys pay your pilot? Well, in the generally, PPK? Gen generally it goes to Alliance, but I think we have a flat rate for like, oh, if you kill more than, if your kill shot has, uh, I think, 250 million or something, then you get like 25. If, it, if the kill mail is like over 2 billion, you get like 100 million. Uh, so uh, the whole PPK doesn't pay. Work. That's such but, a pain. We just put oh, it yeah. all back into SRP and capital programs and stuff. We just put it well, all back into uh, that. We, don't, it, we, it we learned that from MC. Yeah. We learned that from MC. That's what they did. They, every every <laughs> month or every couple of months, somebody, uh, what was his name, Lictor or something, I think he was, yeah. he would do a spreadsheet and then people would get paid this amount. And it was all down to decimals <laughs> as well, you know. It was. You know, there was a ridiculous uh, amount of decimals that were put in there. And you're thinking, man, why did you spend, like, hours, days doing that? And you could have been really, out shooting stuff. Yeah, it really depends, to be honest. It depends in a sense, like, we have done it because we have a few pilots, luckily, who are, like, very, you know, attached towards uh, the sheets and their spreadsheets and stuff that they do. And they'll be like, Mel, I could totally do it. And I was like, well, if you feel like it, go do it. It's, it's not a necessary thing for our pilots like it's not a promise that we will give it out but again I, I think we earn enough to not really care uh, if someone is willing to do it um, so that's that's my thought process on it like if, if someone wants to like step up and do it we, Alliance still makes like a, a decent amount of money out of it and it should be fine yeah. the good but again, back not a pilot yeah. who are putting the time into <laughs> EPK contracts because like you say it, it can be a grind I mean we got towards the end of the void contract and Mel pings the FCs and goes come on guys we literally just need to kill five more Bill and it's against void who are very good at uh, turtling up and fighting you out of their space <laughs> yeah yeah being able to finish off the contract is quite important I suppose you don't want to leave that five Bill sitting on the table and unclaimed but yeah, that, that's such a pain, such a pain. So we, we just filter it all back in. It's, it's, there's no spreadsheets or anything like that. We just know this much usually goes out every month. We bring in this much. So our SRP could be this much, and we can hand out this many lodges or this many doctrine ships. So yeah, we, we, we are really chilled with that. We, uh, I don't think most people know the, the financial state of our alliance, but really good and good enough to be doing capital programs and that sort of thing. So, yeah, it's not done on spreadsheets. And just, we just don't have the time. We, nobody could be bothered to do that sort of thing. I mean, With even us. even to me, uh, would call uh, like alliance meetings or FC meetings, and the whole time he's wandering around in a covops or a tackle ship, and like the yeah. meeting ends when something expensive gets tackled. Yeah. <laughs> do, do you remember the yeah, we didn't... bell members uh bell meetings you came to, Latara? Like we were setting up gate camps during the meetings. It's just horrible. <laughs> oh yeah. So I mean like so we've got obviously we've got Klansman and Mel, so Klansman you've been a Merc pretty much since uh Pew left silent. Uh what would you say is like your sort of most that your favorite part about the the Merc life? Because obviously you're, you're, you're no through and through, you're pew through and through. And Merc life, I don't know. So I started the game as a total noob, so I didn't know the first thing about it. I said earlier that I hadn't even heard of EVE Online before I started playing the betas of EVE Echoes, and I just caught up between games, I suppose, like you'd be between relationships or between jobs. I was between games, and uh, yeah, I just kind of stumbled into it, and quite early on, before... Uh, alliances were made, we made MC, and then when alliances were introduced, we made that. Uh, that kind of fell apart, it just we kind of ran out of steam for the, the PvP side, which was kind of sad, and that was brought together 
are shown under the light when P join, and just their uh, their ferocity of of PVP and the you know the you know just their mindset of it all that really attracted me. So I joined P then, and ultimately P left MC, and that was after we'd left Silence. So yeah, it's been ever since then. So I've been low sec and. Uh, we kind of got a bit bored of Losek and uh, we wanted to do a bit more and we drops off, or Coffer drops off, and that was swiftly blown up by almost everyone on the map. So uh, we thought we are going to have to do this properly if we want that. And uh, that's what we did and we took Ville. So uh, your question was, uh, what's, what's my, my previous moment or some of my memories? I don't know. Oh, what, what, I mean, what's uh, your... Uh... The question was, what, what's your favourite part of the Merc life? Well, what, what keeps you in the Merc life? Well, I live in my ship. I've kind of seen it from two different viewpoints now. I've seen it from what's essentially a, a solve single system holding entity and only defending. And it's really boring. You end up guarding miners and, you know, in your faction frigate and just looking around for the off chance to find somebody. And that just wasn't really for me. And uh, I've been in my own sub system in YZ five or six times since we dropped it, what, a year ago has it been, maybe? And, uh, yeah, so I just kind of live in my ship. And all you need to do is have ships in low second and says, and you're good to go anywhere. And now that they've brought in jump clones, that's just amazing. Now you can start uh, leaving ships deep in null. And you can just jump to them anytime someone puts out a ping. So... I think for a lot of people, the map is so small, uh, so so big to them. You know, it's uh, if if they only spend their time in Fountain and they never really go anywhere except for the weekly travel to Jita to sell their their stuff, the map must seem so large to them. But I've seen every corner of it, you know, and you could see it every corner again and within a month doing that sort of thing, you know. And like uh, like someone says about the the military, you can see exotic places, meet brilliant people, and kill them. And I think that's uh, that's exactly what the, the Merc life is for me. You know, it's not having a home. I just live in the ship, wherever that happens to be, where I log in. Instead of logging into your own citadel and undocking. And yeah, it's, it's just, just freedom, you know? The freedom. The map's really small. Non -stop to what it used to be. It's just non-stop, yeah. But well, the guys that you play with as well, they make that of course makes the huge difference. And that's I think how we've been so successful is that everyone's on the same wavelength. You know, nobody nobody's so grudged when somebody starts talking about ratting matter or something. You know, you you don't have really have time for that, you know. And uh, you know, people will yeah. log in, they log in, they go and fight, join a fleet. And uh, yeah. People talk about uh, some sort of CTA fatigue, but I can assure you the vast majority of our members are just waiting for that CTA thing to go out to, to free up. It's, you know, it's, uh, just, it's just what we do, yeah. It's it's not a hardship no. for us. We, we are not going to get fatigued by CTAs. It's exactly why we log in, you know. And I mean, it's no just the mentality that we do. It was uh, kind of funny for me when I first joined, uh, well, obviously when I came to Pew from Void, because obviously Void had just been in a war, or not long been out out of war with uh, Genesis and Pantheon and Catch-22. And it seemed like your numbers in Alliance would go down over the course of a war. And then I came to know, and suddenly like, these people were popping up out of the woodwork who'd been basically dormant for months because a new, a new big war had showed up, so they were interested. Absolutely, again. yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's, um, you hear those sort of things, you know, coming from the larger entities when you're fighting them that they're they're getting tired calling CTAs and their FCs are getting tired and people are, are wanting back to what they were normally doing. You know, the CTA is the fleet fight is the thing that they do apart from, you to. know, instead of yeah, it's it's the thing that they do between what they would normally do. Whereas the fleet fights is what we do, you know, we log in and that's why we put all our uh, all our PPK money and things like that back into our SRPs to make sure that people can do that, that they don't have to go out and, and rat all day just to pay for 
the the ship that they lost in the fleet, you know. And so yeah, it's it's just it's just freedom, you know. It's I, I am not rich, I am broke, and yet there's nothing that's ever came up that I've not been able to afford. There's always money to be made in Eve, and you don't have to spend hours, days, weeks, ratting, looking for special anomalies that make you a bill. There's just no need for such money, you know. And, or certainly not for me. So I'm broke, and I'm loving it. But yeah, it's it's just a great place to be. It's oh, a great mentality. Yeah. You've, got enough you know, ask, uh, you've got enough ISK to refit your ship. You've got enough IP exactly. to... Uh, because it gets exactly. paid you back. Exactly. And, uh, as long as I have enough money to buy some fuel for the dictator and I've got enough IP to replace it, I that's I'm happy. Yeah. Exactly. And I think that's the, the, the mentality that most have. They could be broke, but they know if they lose a ship, they're getting that straight back from the lines, no problem. Definitely. That was that was definitely one of the better sides of uh, of no for me. Uh but then we, obviously we have uh, Mel in here as well, and now obviously you're very new to the Merc life. I mean, it's been what two, three months. So what what is it that sort of attracted you to that model, that uh, that whole in play experience? Uh, it's it's a it's definitely a different experience than uh, than Transpin, right? Um, I, I started uh, the game as uh, just uh, being in high sec with. Uh, my friends coming over from a different game and you know we wanted to like do our own things and eventually we were like oh we should go to null you know and then uh, join gha and joined orc and eventually moved to gen um uh so over in gen uh the main frustrations were like there was not a lot of freedom you can't pe- uh you can't really pvp with anything you want and you have to wait for that pvp season when someone you know uh, does something or so, uh, something like that uh, there was a very specific portion of the map that you can actually go hit. Um, it, it's frustrating. So um, near the end, when it became like you know, like we, we would fleet up every day and all these things, and you know, there'd be like, sorry for that. Um, so and then uh, near the end, it became like I'll just make my own server, you know, and just deal with it. <laughs> and, uh, so we. We would like go out PvP pretty much every day, with, uh, but then there's still like a whole lot of restriction uh, with what we can or cannot do. And uh, I also remember like with Void, we had this thing that we can't shoot industry ships, right? And then in a in a fight, they'd like intentionally bring and drop an Aries on a, on a combat grid, and would pull it anywhere. <laughs> and, then, and then Mama would like yell at me and was like, you know, why would you shoot Daenerys? And I was like. It, like literally on a fight, you know, like they, they brought it on a combat grid. What do you expect me to do? Like, a fleet of combat. I, combat. I, I, I was like, dude, <laughs> come the fuck on. Like, who are fighting? And, I, and then I was I, like, even at some point, I was made to pay for an Arius or something like that. And I was like, you know what? Just, just be done with it. I don't want to deal with this shit. So, it's, <laughs> so there's like a whole lot of restrictions and Diplo stuff that I have to deal with. And then according to her opinion, it was also like Diplo is the hardest thing in the game. Um, so then uh, after we got freed, I mean, my opinion was that we just make our own corporation and do our own thing because I don't want to deal with all this stuff. Um, but eventually what came down to is like many corporations were like, oh, just don't, you know, don't leave like this. So we'll just make our own thing. I'm like, okay. Um, so when we made the alliance, uh, it was uh, it was more like I didn't really have a concrete plan of like if we're going like you know uh, like what kind of game model we want. But like overall, my understanding was that I don't want like restrictions on P- PvP and all these things, right? Um, and what we used to run uh, because, um, but again, those are like outside gen on our own servers and stuff. Uh, so the the point distribution was also a pretty fun thing uh, when we did it. Was uh, if you show up for a fleet, you get a point. You know, the fleet did this and that. You get this many points, and then end of the week, we'll gather all our loots and other things, our past deals and stuff, and we'll distribute the money. And uh, we'd get like, I think pretty much every pilot or like hundred pilots got like billions of this like weekly. Um, that was great. Um, so at that point, I was like, well, you know, we're pretty much PvPers, the people that broke off. Why don't we just get money for PvP, you know? 
and they don't really do free stuff. So, uh, so that was the primary thought. And uh, so outside Merck, in, in the state of piracy, we thought about, oh, maybe we'll just go ransom people or, you know, or, or extort people. And then it was like, well, how about having some constant income so we implement this renter model, uh, which is also working pretty nice. Uh, initially, there was some you know, pushbacks, took a few CTAs, but it is what it is. Um, but I, I think coming to the realization where, you know, the peers can actually self-sustain and do their own thing one, when other people pay you for, you know, either care bearing or whatever the fuck they want to do in the game. I don't really care as long as they pay. Yeah. <laughs> so so it, it, it's a great freedom. And then compared to the comment where I've always heard Diplo is the hardest thing in the game and stuff, not really. It's It's been the simplest thing ever for me. Because it has always been like, oh, you know, not nothing really. I haven't seen much like that you have to manage Diplo, like uh, that's a critical soft thing. Nothing like that. It's been more like talk with people. Uh, if, if there's something needed to be talked about other than that, you know, you shoot me, I shoot you, kind of thing. So it's, it's a whole lot of fun. Um, we've also uh, way past what, you know, Jen had in their treasury even pre Pantheon War. Uh, so business is good so far. I think uh, it's going great. We've also uh, been able to focus on the actual PvP aspect of the game, where you know you call a fleet to get fifty, sixty people pretty easily, like pretty much anywhere you call it. Um, uh, our CTF form up in Gen used to be an hour long thing where we can pretty much form up our CTA fleet like within five minutes and like roll out kind of thing. So there's been a lot of positive changes that I actually appreciate and want, wanted to happen. It also came at a cost of kicking out about 78 corporations that were part of Gen and not letting them in, uh, even outside corporations that wanted to join us. And we even like offered corporations, we like, oh, if you want to join us, you have to fight one of our corporations at the sun and win. You know, <laughs> so there's been... <laughs> There's an interesting thing. So, uh, we, we also had, like, one of our corporations joined us by, I didn't know them. Um, when they wanted to join us, I basically said, well, you have 12 hours. In 12 hours, I'll go to that location, see what kind of fleet you can put out, and I'll consider those guys formed up with about 50 ships, 30 battleships, 20 lodgy stuff. So I was like, yeah, sure, come over. Uh, so there's, <laughs> like, having those restrictions and like commitments and like also there was like restrictions like oh if i think like you're not performing you know uh we'll just force you to merge like the, there can be no resistance on this like if we if alliance says we'll, you'll have to do it you'll have to do it um and also the ability to to not worry about our structures too too much because you know I, I want them to blow up someday someone will free us up or we'll blow it up ourselves and move on to some different area in the game it'll be fun uh so yeah, ha having the ability to to make all these uh, you know fluent decisions is, is definitely helpful for the game. As uh, as much as game thing, it's brilliant. I mean, it's, it's fun. Don't I'm take it seriously. I know exactly. Right. Don't take it seriously. It's just it's just having a laugh at the at the game, you know. Right. Get, oh, yeah. uh, get angry. hansman has got a reputation in No as one of the No's best uh, Reddit PVPers. Do I? Oh shit! Sure. <laughs> yeah, you're one of the most savage people on Reddit, and uh, I've, had, oh. I've had other people before. It's like, dude, like Klansman is a great guy. That's just his Reddit persona. He's just savage. <laughs> <laughs> so you lied to them, did you? Told them I was a great guy. I think you're a great guy, Klansman. Ah, uh, Zov, but certainly better than than a lot of others. We we tend to stay out of local. I don't like trash talking the local. I, I like Take to have a chat with people usually after a fight. Like if I've if I've been roaming, you know, I'll give I'll give people a <laughs> my, my go to is I, I'll rate their home defense out of ten. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I do like a bit of credit. I must admit, I didn't know I was known for it though. I didn't know that uh, I was known in, for the Reddit. So. In no, you're known for it, Clansman. Oh man, I'm going to have to watch what I say now if people are watching. I didn't realize anybody was reading that. But uh, it's uh, it, it's entertaining, and I, I know propaganda is a big part of the this game. Uh, but I, I, 
think uh, if, if you're if you're sensible with it, which to be honest, most of your posts I I, I completely agree with, and uh, wouldn't say it uh, offends anyone too much unless they've got really thin skin. But what I've got to realise is is that I'm always right. <laughs> so, <laughs> if people understand that, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. Uh, again, the, like when I say propaganda bullshit, I don't put it in a negative thing. I, I'm mostly meaning like it doesn't really. It shouldn't have to affect anyone. Like you can call us whatever you want, or you know, like end of the day, none of this matters really. Because uh, it, it's it's more like not because there is a propaganda, you know, that there will be some sort of changes. It's more like if you can fight us, you can fight us regardless, and if you. Yeah can't fight us you can't fight us right there's no difference in like creating some sort of reason behind why are we attacking you know like you know feel free to that's the <laughs> that's yeah the, what, uh, what you uh, what you'll probably find as a as a merc organization is that everyone hates you until yeah, they need you also fine until they need you you know and the <laughs> same the same person who has been calling you atrocious names everywhere it's now up in your DMs asking for contracts. And that's yeah. fine. You take, you take them, you know, all water under the bridge after every contract. You know, and, exactly. And, uh, and people come up yeah. with all their different definitions of like what they think piracy should be, right? And that's, uh, yeah. that's another thing is like, oh, you're doing this. You should be called pirates. And like, you know what? Fuck off. Because uh, like so, some people goes on like, you're not true pirates because you have SOP. Like, okay. You know, and then you're not two true pirates because you're not taking my contract over that contract and all these things. Uh, like, who cares? <laughs> hey, yeah, yeah. Wait, someone said okay, you can't have Sav as a today. pirate. You can't have Sav as a pirate. Wait, uh, please explain this. Oh, I, I, yeah. I mean, yeah, I've heard that before. Yeah. Dude, yeah like, I mean, I mean, have they ever like oh, actually watch Black Sails? Anyone actually watch uh, Black Sails? I mean, come on. It. It does. Black Sails is a great show, by the way. Like if anyone didn't, but uh, but the thing is, it, it's more like you know, like the the point is, I do whatever we want. I don't have to worry about how you define my piracy. You know? <laughs> yeah, uh, you can do, you can do a, a, an act of piracy and then followed by an act of mercenary, and right. yeah, it's, it doesn't really matter what yeah, their definition is and if there's any difference between the two or if there's a gulf of difference doesn't really matter we are what we are the, yeah. the same people as you mentioned like until they need you is is more like you know when when we established our rental model they're not like people are willing to pay initially right um so as i said we had to do a few ctas you know everything got sorted and the same group of people that has been like screaming that extortion and this and that uh, next day would come back and be like, hey, these guys are attacking us. Can you help? Sure. You know? <laughs> uh, then it all makes sense why you pay me because, you know, you can't defend yourself. So I'll do it for you. So you'll have to pay, give some payments. You know, simple as that. Uh, it's just understanding of like what they think piracy should be. It doesn't really affect us. So. <laughs> yeah. Oh, definitely. Definitely. It's. Uh... So, like, it seems like the Merc and the pirate model is basically freedom to do whatever you want, whatever you want right. to. Yeah, it seems to be both, both are just the same name for contrary to the game norm, I think, just now, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, like, uh, and the large alliance. I mean, a lot of large, a lot of the larger groups, even the me, 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 sort of medium sized groups, are. Uh, I mean, we, we, we throw the term Care Bear around, but it's it's the people who enjoy playing the game in a PvE aspect. And, I mean, if that's what people want to be doing, it's what they want to be doing. But uh, that's where groups like No and Burr come in, and <coughs> if people need to uh, basically have the extra firepower, well, they can pay someone to do it, or they can forge out alliances between their neighbours and... It's one of those. We're here to provide a service, realistically, uh, as these groups that are no and but uh, I'm, I'm not sure if there are any other pirate organizations, not pirates, or merc organizations out there at the minute. Obviously, there was Sixth, but uh, they've uh, basically dissolved into Terran Fed. So, yeah, it's a a strange one as well. 
I've not had anything to do with the, the whole term fed, but uh, our dead got did have a lot to do with them at some point, but I think that's weaned out as well. So yeah, it's it's not been something that we, even myself or no, has taken any interest in at all. Well, yeah, like, like I say, it's just, uh, I'm not sure if there are any other real Merc organisations out there. Maybe there's a couple of small corps who do some small work here and there, but... Uh, they the should. All my the should. All on that group, but I the should. It's an excellent, excellent way to play the game. Is the should. They should consider it. If you're sitting there and you're bored sitting in your soft system, go and do it. Yeah, just go and attack your neighbour. Why not? Just, you don't even need a reason. Just go out and attack someone. No, it's it's yeah. not a game of it's not a game of Care Bear versus the PvP. It's just it's it's a constant shift of of play. And uh, and uh, and hunter, you know, it's and that could change at any moment. You know, you could turn from being prey into being the hunter. And, yeah, it's just a it's a good way to play. It. Just try not to be prey too much, you know, <laughs> and you probably won't be offended so often. I mean, if you're solo hunting, you can all of a sudden become the prey if you if you stumble into the wrong part of space. You yeah, absolutely <laughs> can, yes. Yes, more, more often than I would like to admit, I've got myself into too much just a case situation. Bit off more than you could do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. you, you see that all the time in Alliance chat, you know, somebody will, uh, will ping out a system that's 40 jumps away and he says that he's tackled a Balgon. And you're thinking, mate, you are in serious trouble with that Balgon. <laughs> there is no one near you. Yeah. You are solo tackling a Balgon. There is no chance. You should disengage immediately. <laughs> yeah, but then it, then yeah, it, you it, should be it, checking probably you someone sure. like uh, Skek who then proceeds to kill the Balgon, and everyone's going, "How the yeah. hell frigate?" <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. You just see the the faction battleships coming in from our from our lone Dramiel. It's incredible the kill chain. Teach me, teach me how you do that. Incredible. <laughs> yeah, somewhere deep to more. Uh, Sherika, that's right, that's right. Uh, oh, yeah, Ron is, yeah. he just DM'd me. <laughs> Thanks, Ron. Uh, <laughs> yes, yes, Sherika. Uh, you just see the, the faction battleships come raining in. You're thinking, teach me how you just did that. No, it's, it's, it's good to watch. But yes, more often than not, if you're a single sector pilot and you've tackled a Balkan in the deepest depths of, of Milsec, you've probably bitten off more than you can chew and you've just went from being predator to prey. <laughs> oh yeah, I mean, it happens all the time. From my perspective, if it's Thomas tackling, I'll probably still go 50 jumps because I'm probably, I probably know it's still tackled. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it does happen. I it definitely have, does happen. I kind of want to just like get Tom when he gets back from vacation to tackle my Balgorn. Just to see if I can wriggle out of uh, out of it, and then I'll know I'll meet. I'll know I'm a good Balgorn pilot if I can get out of a Tom tackle. Definitely. <laughs> yeah. I mean, everyone has those tackle pilots that you know that if you do travel like forty jumps, whatever they're tackling is either dead or it's still held. Right. Yeah, I know him by name. I don't think I've ever fought him, but I definitely know him by name. He's, he's definitely has a name of a. Of a, an incredible PvP pilot, yeah. Hey, Ta Tama's got a reputation, Tama. <laughs> so I, I thought, originally, I thought like Tama. Oh, yeah, people are just talking him up because he's he's like the best tackle pilot in Gen. And then I went on a roam with him, and I was like, no, he's the best tackle pilot I've ever flown with. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of interesting. Yeah, some people are scared. With Tama, I was I was really surprised when he came over to um, to Bell. He decided to change his name, so it was it was interesting. Like, dude, you have you're legendary. Why would you do this? <laughs> I think that it's because he's legendary. That's the that's because, the problem. <laughs> because of that. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, people people don't instantly dock when he uh, enters local. I think that's probably why. Okay, that's fair. And Miller did it a while back, didn't he? Uh, he changed yeah. his name and yeah, the corp. No. Yeah, Miller had a big problem with that. He was an epic tackle, and uh, yeah, people would just instantly dock when he came in. It comes a problem when you have a, a name and a tag as well. Our tag gets us, loses us a lot of, a lot of kills as well, yeah. So, oh, I have some neutral flying around. 
I wouldn't know with those for now. Yeah, with, when I was with No, like like myself and Dragon might go run a few stories for a bit of isk, and uh, you'd, we'd jump into a low-sec system, start running a story, and it would empty. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Did they, was that, what did they call that? Uh, badge tanking or something like that? Uh. If, uh, I, mean, if you were, if, I mean, if you were to see uh, four or five No guys sitting in a low-sec system, you're probably not going to want to go and mess around with them because the assumption is that they are there to mess around anyway. So, yeah. But if someone's looking for a good fight, they might. So, maybe a double edged sword. I don't know. Yeah, there are definitely but, some people who'd come at you, you because they want the prestige of taking out a no pilot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, so definitely if you have a, a recognisable name, it's just, uh, sometimes a good idea to change that name so they don't recognise you. But maybe Tana did do the right thing there. I mean, I've, I've done it on an alt before because uh, we were going into war with Silent, who uh, have a reputation of headshotting, so I renamed an alt and was using that for the entire war. Uh, yeah, I have my alt, but I think that's pretty... that that cover's probably blown well by now. I, I've seen your alt in system and said hi to you. I think I usually DM'd you, but I might have said it in local. <laughs> yeah, you did. You said it in local when, uh, when, you, when I was at the the silent fight, I think it was, when uh, Silent brought the 200 just last week. I think it was you, maybe it wasn't you, but yeah, called out and vocal by my name on the neutral lot. Yeah, well, that's funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so maybe Tammy did do the right thing there, he won't be recognised as much in local. Although now, maybe if, since he's been on the, the radio, he might uh, want to change that again now, Tammy. Ah, uh, we didn't. We didn't tell him what he's changed his name to, though. No, we didn't. There you go. There you go. And that is that is inside uh, information. So. Uh, uh, it's so you're not going to give out. It? You're not going to give out the secret sauce, no. I bet you it's Bob. I bet you if you see Bob in local, <laughs> run people, run. Bob. I mean, local. yeah, with with Bob is also another legendary <laughs> frigate pilot. <laughs> but... Oh, uh, oh, shoot! Yeah, I didn't even hear about that. Yeah, to be honest, dude. <laughs> Uh, I mean, with Tama, um, Tama only has um, his name, I think, in battle. That's it. And for everyone else, it's just Tama. So, yeah, uh, we, we are we are the keeper of the secrets. It's quite nice. But uh, Tama is an extraordinary pilot. Um, we have them all over the place. I think that after, uh, for a, for a while, there were people who who would uh, challenge me and say, "Oh no, no, no! Uh, o Miller from No is the best tackle pilot I do." You're, no, no, no. Oh, Miller is good, but no, no, not even close. Well, well, Miller's, Miller's better than good, though. Miller's better than good. Miller's great. Tom is still somehow better. Oh, that's, no, that's no offense I, to Miller. I, I, I'm I hear, I hear what you're saying. I hear what you're saying. Fight at the son. This sounds like a contest waiting to happen. How, how about yeah. we, we give it a week and we have each party tackle whatever I they can. And, and the winner, <laughs> the winner, the winner will, will be with... Miller's retired. Oh, that's Yeah, bad. sadly we would have to get an out let's, of retirement. Let's not, let's not get into a competition. Oh my gosh, like, but why? Why? Why not? We're going to win it. Why not? We're going to win. Oh, no, no, no. Uh, nice. You know, I, I want Miller to have a peaceful, you know, retirement. So, you know, competition. <laughs> oh, no, no. What, man, she, I, what we I do, want guys, Miller is we go on a joint. It'd be fun. Yeah. What we do is we go on a joint. No, Burr, Rome. The only two tackle pilots are uh, Nose, Nose Best Tackle, Tama. Mm. And then uh, whoever tackles the most ISK value at the end of the Rome. Claims victory, and we can do this once a month. So that, uh, man. Sure, let's do it. I'm, like, I'm pretty, yeah. I'm pretty oh, sure Tom will win. Wow. We'll do it. Set up, man. My boys, uh, I'll give that you that guys man. a go, yeah. Only, only a new leader. Got... <laughs> who is, who is nose number challenge. one right now? Who, who's nose oh. number one right now? It's got to be we Batman, have, right? We have so many. Badman's incredible, yeah. I don't know. I wouldn't want to. I wouldn't want to call anybody out in case I, I miss someone. But yeah, we've got good ones. I could definitely put some lists together. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I would have to go looking. Miller would definitely, of course, be 
contender, but I would have to go look and get find out names. Yeah, but yeah, you just runs mentioned a great tackle pilot and, as well. Yeah, runs runs a great tackle pilot. Yeah, yeah, he'd be in contention as well. You said Bad Moon, he's an epic pilot. Yeah, yeah, there's so many. It's scary how good some people are. I, mean, I suck. I just enjoy it. I suck, but uh, <laughs> some people are really. Yeah, I just I suck at it, but I enjoy it. And uh, but some people are really good at this game. I mean, it's scary to see how good they are. Yeah, and, well, I mean, when it comes to your tackle pilots, uh, I I feel like the tackle um the tackle pilots it requires a very special degree of skill, right? Um, that even not all FCs possess it. So it's just when you yeah. find one, it's it's an incredible thing to behold. It, yeah. It's the you set up yeah. a room and you instantly DM like all the good tackle pilots you know going, Can you make this? <laughs> yeah, you absolutely need tackle, yeah. If you don't have tackle, you might as well just go and dot. Yeah. If you don't have tackle. I mean bad tackle if you have to, or poor tackle, but if you've got a good tackle and the more the merrier, yeah, it makes or breaks a fleet. Definitely. Oh, I'm just, yeah. I just got a just got a news just in. Uh, Th- Thomas said he's up for up for this competition. Oh, oh, oh is he listening? Um, yeah, uh, Thomas yeah. listening. Holy cow! Uh, okay, it's well, on. Tom. Someone check check the list. Check the list to see the new name that's coming. <laughs> someone get me that name. Thomas here. I believe that uh, Run is also here. So shout out to the. Um, I believe um, Run is is not executor of No at this point. Um, by the way, in, in, in the meantime, let's not talk about Tama anymore because he's gonna get over his head. We're <laughs> <laughs> gonna leave that alone. I'm staying. I'm staying off that. It's okay. Dude's got his uh, feet up on a beat, still tackles, and has a carrier killed on his room today. I know, right? Like, really, who does that? Goes on vacation and still gets a kill. Still kills a what 30, 36 uh, bill. Yes. I, I, to- yeah. I told him that, that it's Care Bear Week. I don't think anyone listens, but it's fine. <laughs> yes. yeah, P- PvP pilots are going to PvP. There's no stopping them. Mm, yep. Yeah. I mean, I've seen I've seen Ram's uh, numbers coming going up and up and up this week, Mel. He's definitely not ca- uh, care bearing. <laughs> yeah, these are problems. I mean, it's fine as long as you have the thing I want. You know that you have enough is do whatever you want. But otherwise, you no know, time to get some is. I need <laughs> need things. Need things. Uh, uh-huh. Right. I showed you my things. Yes. But yeah. Thank you. Mm-hmm. More. <laughs> oh jeez! <laughs> more things. More things. <laughs> more things. As you can tell, I everyone be cool Al is a uh, tireless slave driver when it comes to making money. Yeah. And and yeah. things apparently. And things. Yeah. I wouldn't know what to do with money with us. I wouldn't know what to do with. That. I would just waste it. <laughs> I don't. I don't need money. I've got enough IP to replace the ship I'm playing. That's all I need. I, I remember when you first got your Macarial clansman. That was uh, that was entertaining because people were weren't used to seeing you outside of your hurricane lodgy. I know something something new, something shiny. I've still not lost that thing. Uh, came close a couple of times. Like <laughs> yeah, the rats in a special in, in one of those what's it called a nihilist dead space? Is that what they're called? When it's a separate instance. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. The rats almost caught me. I tried to bolt for the opposite gate. Decided that was a bad idea, and then tried to go all the way back again. Oh, that was a butt clencher. And that's what happens when you send PVPers to go do PVE. Something bad always happens. It's not worth it, man. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just hoping that in this two weeks, that's all. It, like, like I've seen terrible things. Like yesterday, that was one of the terrible things that I was hanging out on comms. And then suddenly there's a there's a I think void fleet or OG fleet yeah, one of those uh, of 16 people fleet and then so hanging out on comms and in my mind people should be crabbing don't even bother you know like just let them pass we killed so them anyway in my mind like <laughs> yeah in my mind just just let them go and in the meantime I see Mackenzie Lotara and like, everyone like taking their ships and like trying to not even calling a fleet or anything just going as like okay I'm dead. Hold on, hold on, time out, time out, before you get into that, 
they were on their way out of our space, okay? So yeah, someone had to go, go and crabbing. someone had to go and bait them to keep them there. Me and Latara, we, we live on the border of Burr space. They had to go through sure. our space. So we decided that, hey, we're going to go and entertain these guys. And we had other people that were there, including yourself, that could have called for a formal fleet. And by the time and they that, got there... All I'm saying, all I'm saying is if you're going to engage 16 people, like, you know, not ideal because we're crabbing. But if you want to do it anyway, just take a fleet. You know, it takes five minutes to get 30, 40 guys. Oh, uh, the intent was yeah, in 30 minutes, they were all dead anyway. Oh, uh, no, oh the, the drama then, going on in there. Uh, wait yeah. until I get on Reddit and report all that. Dude, they and were then, dead. <laughs> they all died anyway. Lotara's like, Lotara's like, I'm taking my Megatron Striker. Okay, and then five minutes coming. later, okay. Yeah, okay, I'm dead. I'm bringing my rogue. I didn't have anything. Rogue. I didn't I was like, have what the fuck are you guys doing? <laughs> I didn't have anything to do with that. I had nothing to do with Latara Yeedy uh, last night. I brought oh in God. an interdictor. That was what I went in. And guess what? I killed the Memorodata with it. So leave me alone. <laughs> uh, okay. I've, been, I've been trying to get that Megatron Striker killed for about two months. <laughs> telling Latara not to eat is like telling water not to be wet. <laughs> <laughs> Is my is my emoji still on the no server clansman? Oh uh, what is it? Which one? The ye ye the Yeetathron. The Yeetathron. Let me out of it. I don't know. I'm a I'm a boomer. I'm not very good at this. Let's see. If you can uh, if you can send it to me, if it's still there, clansman, I'll put it on our server. Great deal, deal. In fact, I'll I'll have Dragon do this. Dragon's much better. Yeah. She showed me how to make a thread. Yep, yep, just send it over to me, so, I'll put it on the Bell Discord, and uh, I'll, I'll give it to um, for administration, see if we can put it on the Burr Discord. Okay, contact Koro, don't put it to me, because everyone tags me, and I don't know what to do with Discord at all. I... Same, man, same. <laughs> yeah. I can, I I can join up join up voice comms, to... but don't ask me to make a channel. Yeah, I had to, like, get Dragon on comps, because Koro wasn't there, at, to, to figure out what to do with something. Uh, can I like share my screen and then you just tell me where to click? And she was like, okay. And like, like help like set up or like a whole bunch of Discord stuff. And then Koro comes next day. It's like, what is going on in Discord? Everything's changed. It's like, yeah, I know like everything about Discord now. It's <laughs> crazy. Discord professional after one day. <laughs> I, yeah, I, yeah, I, I don't know how it works. I, just, I could do some basic things, but. Some I people still, really know how to do it, making bots and other things, that's... Yeah, I that's mean, Dragon, about, like, let me set up some stuff, then I forgot, like, immediately, you know, I just clicked whatever she told me to click, and that's all I remember. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's easy to do with Dragon, though. Yeah. What, what was it you said? And yes, she, oh, she yes, was your, uh, your emoji that, is there. And then she was like, she was like, oh, your Discord prompts are mess and spaghetti and explaining like how it should be. I was like, you know what? I don't really care, nor do I know. Just tell me where to click and I'll be done with it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I got coach. Cool. Cool. Uh, Mel, get cool. Mel's management style is basically, I don't know, uh, get someone else to do it. <laughs> yeah, I, I get a cold sweat every time I get pinged as moderator to add roles. Yeah. Like, oh god, I'm gonna mess this up, man. Someone's gonna be in our leadership channels and I'm gonna get kicked out because it Yeah, you probably <laughs> learned this that most FCs are not good at um at other management tasks. Except maybe yeah. corporations. Um we tend to be pretty good with corporations but not other things. Um but yeah, weird things. Either way, uh yeah, don't 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 ping Mel with anything that is even remotely uh, consistent with some measure of responsibility. It's uh... well. It's <laughs> recently, recently, Ron also made it made me a diplo because we had to Why? set run. Set... This is a mistake. Yeah, because <laughs> oh no, it's not. Like so, we were talking about setting a corporation <laughs> blue temporarily, right? Like very small period of time, and then they're pinging. Oh, we already set blue. I was like, guys, you know, I don't know how to set blue and stuff. What? So I'll have to work. Yeah. <laughs> so, like... I'll have to wait. Oh my gosh! You know, dude. till I find Koro or someone available to do it. I have no clue how this works. And then Ron started sending me like screenshots of like process of how to do this. So I was like, okay, so go click this. I was like, oh, it didn't work. And he's like, oh no, you have to start from there. I was like, okay, 
And then he was like, well, man, that's how I just made you a Diplo in 30 seconds. I was like, okay. <laughs> now I can set up Diplo. Man, oh man, you're, you guys, you're killing it's me. Hilarious. It's hilarious. This, this is a, uh, <laughs> this is an episode all about, um, about fleet commanders and specifically fleet commanders in uh, mercenary organizations. Thankfully, it is not about <laughs> diplomats because this is, this is terrible. <laughs> um, we can... We couldn't find a no FC instead. I'm standing it. Mm, yeah. So, yeah. Unfortunately. I'm just telling pilot and no. <laughs> no one should listen to anything. Our, our I say. always. Uh, he's the anchor that is too close or too far away. <laughs> That's me. Well, I mean, yeah. I, I'm not leadership by this. It's all good. Like I don't know what I'm doing there. I just go on, hang out in comms, and people do other things. I don't know. Most of the yeah. times, people just. Like most of the time, people if don't they, they don't agree with me, just say coop mail and then be done with it and do whatever they want anyway. So, hair uh, <laughs> cut. I yep. I can't say anything. I mean, dude, I, I don't care. Look, I'm gonna put it this way. I'm gonna continue to do my job as a proper care bear, but as soon as this is over, yep. I I don't you know the gloves are off. And uh, if anyone comes into my space, I'm still shooting them. I'm sorry, dude. <laughs> Oh, I mean, don't wait for coming to space. Yeah, Do they like, come? You shouldn't in? even live in our space. Uh, uh, yeah. Like, I'm good with like you know not going roam them, but if they come into our space, I'm still shooting them. Just saying, I can't promise <laughs> that we are not. We're just gonna let people pass through our 97 oh, just, and not shoot just them. Just for this week, you know. Oh like, I don't, like, do people still have fleet fights and stuff? People are supposed to just rat. Just yes. two weeks. I don't know. This is what happens is when you so tell when you tell PvP pilots to do care bear things. They find a way yeah. to get their fix anyway. It's like it's like it's like you have someone that is like a, a cocaine addict, and you say, okay, you're gonna detox, and like you're just going cold turkey, and you know that they're gonna find a way to get their fix one way or another. So like one week into yeah. it, they've already like you know like sniffed more cocaine than they typically would in an entire week because you told them not to do it. This is kind of like the equivalent of basically blue balling your entire organization. So there, <laughs> we're doing it. We are doing what you are asking us to do. But whenever somebody comes in, it's like, it's like bringing an alcoholic to a bar, dude. <laughs> that, that sounds like you're speaking from experience there, and that's concerning. <laughs> that, is, that, that, is a, that is deep insight into that, and that is what it is. Yeah, like yeah. The, uh, the entire, like, sort of constellation yesterday went rabid for the way <laughs> that came to me. Didn't bother calling for a fleet or anything. They just wanted to kill him. <laughs> I think yeah, everyone was still in their racking It did. Um, Guess what? Well, anyway, guys, it was 30... great hanging out. I have to go. Oh, but, we all um, have to go. It's almost um, oh, three yeah. hours into our broadcast. But, like, okay. by the way, Mel, before you go, did yeah. you know that there was, uh, like, after we killed everyone in the Void Fleet, there was a Burr gay camp sitting on uh, 66P, like, for 30 minutes after that? Oh, God. <laughs> You're going to be in trouble. You're going um, to get in trouble. I am not going to be in trouble because it wasn't my gay camp, so I don't care. But I'm just saying that I mean, there was a gay camp. Do whatever you want. But, uh -huh, you know, yeah. like, grab right. a little more for this week. Okay, yeah. fine, <laughs> That's all fine, I whatever. All right, all right. Yeah, we're all joining Crab Team 6 honorary members. Okay. So, Nox. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, talk to Nox. I'll, I should probably bring him as, like, a trainer for, like, how to crab for a little bit. But we'll see. <laughs> Freaking killing me, but... I think that we are done for this week's episode of New Eden F. I want to thank you guys for tuning in. It's really awesome to have all these these, these great people in here. Like, really, this is the most FC we've had in, on the show at one time since, my gosh, the last time we had FC Day. I don't know. I don't think you got to, you got to be a part of that one, but you got to be a part of this one. So, thumbs up. Thanks very much for having us. Yeah. Hey, anytime, anytime. You and your wonderful Scottish charm are welcome on the show. <laughs> Anytime you want to I'm just in. surprised anyone understands what I'm saying, so I I'm taking that as a win. I, I understand what you're saying. It's, it's all well and good. Oh, by the way, and uh, this is that song I was telling you about earlier, uh, My Guiding Light by Christina Novelli and Rashad Duran. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah, turn it up. Check it out. We'll see you next week.